the whole secret to winning big in the stock market is not to be right all the time, but to lose the least amount possible when you are wrong. With that as the theme, welcome to our Zoom web series hosted by One Tree Hill and PMS Cart on the juggernauts, conversations with uncommon and curious fund managers. We have with us today, uh, Naresh Gupta from Acura Cap, which is actually one of the top performing risk adjusted PMS managers in India. Previously, Naresh was the founder and managing director at Adobe India. Welcome Naresh to the juggernauts. Thank you, Jay. It's a pleasure to be on the show. Excellent. Uh, Naresh, you know, if you're ready, what we like to dive into is what we call our Machine Gun 15. Uh, it's a quick fire round of questions uh, that will hopefully make you think uh, two seconds more than you usually do. And uh, hopefully you have as much fun as we do. Sure, absolutely. Let's, let's go. Uh, should we dive in? Sure. Excellent. So the first question. Uh, what is the motivation for today's investor? I think it's uh, to make a, a decent return from their money while not losing or risking too much of it. Okay. Uh, you know, it's been quite some time since the government has come up with sort of a stimulus for our uh, markets and the economy as a whole. Do you think there are still some silver bullets remaining uh, from the government side? Well, there are always uh, things that government can do um, and different governments around the world will do different things to stimulate the economy. Uh, government of India has done a lot of things. I mean, if you look at the set of uh, uh, changes and uh, uh, modifications to rules and what we call reforms that have happened in last four months, that list is fairly long. Uh, many of these reforms like uh, AGRI and so will have a significant positive impact over a long periods of time. Uh, some of the reforms are more uh, marketing and uh, uh, ploy in a way the noise is much higher than the reality. And some will turn out to be bad in the sense the unintended consequences are not factored in. But net net if I have to say there is a lot of positive movement that has happened in the regulation framework uh, of the country. Uh, there is stimulus in the sense that uh, if you look at uh, the amount of money that's gone into the villages and in the hand of poor people, uh, that's significant. Yes, uh, you know the middle class and the upper class is, uh, has not been touched as much as it could have been. And maybe that's something that government can do going forward. Fair, fair. Uh you know, in talking about reforms uh, uh, and the markets, uh, is the NBFC problem as difficult as it looks right now? Uh, I, I, I really don't know the answer. Um, and then probably uh, nobody does. You know, if you have heard uh, Uday Kotak speak uh, after the earnings result, he said he feels sorry for the NBFC and bank investor because uh, we are all flying uh, blind in a way. Uh, come 31st of August and probably uh, 1st of uh, uh, October is when we will know really like the true situation. Uh, you know, the initial reaction to the economy after the lockdown and the initial uh, fear uh, that was there for the virus was fairly negative that uh, we'll suffer quite uh, badly. Lately, I've been hearing uh, more positive views from businessmen, my friends who run businesses, sure. and they think that uh, we might have dodged a major bullet here. And, and primarily because of the small town and villages where the lockdown wasn't as severe and people uh, mostly went along with their life. Now, if that is true, then one would suspect that NBFCs and banks have not suffered as badly as feared. But again, it's anybody's guess right now. Fair. You're obviously referring to the moratorium that's been offered uh, to the market right now. Uh, is there any possibility that get, this gets extended to December? Well, as far as I can see, probably not. You know, the RBI and government have made their move and uh, offered this one-time restructuring. Uh, I think that's probably where we will be. I'll be very surprised if uh, it... Uh, happens the other way. Okay, fair. 
uh, you know, a lot of talk has been around diversification in the market. And one of the topics that uh, in the recent uh, two, three months has come out is gold, right? Uh, so the question is, is gold the panacea to all our diversification questions? Oh, absolutely not. I mean, see, you can diversify along many axes. You can diversify along with equity and debt. You can have uh, precious metal. You can have just commodities and equity. So there are many avenues to uh, diversification. Uh, gold provides some stability to the portfolio because over a long period of time and going back like you know a few hundred years you see that gold gives you a return in access of the inflation and yeah. uh, and uh, and in india actually it's been a little higher because of uh, whatever reasons so so that, that is, but you know now if you look at uh, uh, the assets that can that have the property of what you'll call value, or uh, that can hold value, that's transportable, and so on. Uh, the digital currency is also an alternative. Sure, so sure. I will think that uh, in a time of stress, all these assets are uh, like gold, digital currency. They will uh, hold value. And uh, when we go back to the go-go years of growth and uh, global prosperity. Uh, this will probably not be as uh, uh, loved and cared. Okay, uh, that's absolutely. But again, I am not a gold expert. I am not a commodity expert. So uh, everything I say can uh, be false. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you know, in talking about uh, you know what is going to happen, uh, sort of in the future. Uh, what do you think is the next oil? Is it pharma or is it data? Well, uh, in a way, pharma is data. I mean, you know, if you look at what pharma industry is, is taking the knowledge that people have uh, created over generations of the, the set of drugs that work and add a, uh, in a, a very efficient manufacturing to it, right? Yeah. And uh, when you when you manufacture the right kind of uh, product, it becomes valuable. Um, manufacturing per se has value, but only so much value. Um, and as we go forward, the value of uh, knowledge or data uh, keeps improving. Uh, the manufacturing, while valuable, uh, you know, keeps getting standardized and uh, uh, productized in a way. Sure. Sure, and sort of you know, staying on 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 data per se, uh, you know, you're seeing outside of India, there seems to be a big and a significant move to tech, right? Whether it's Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Google, and all the other Zoom that the platform that we are using, uh, somehow this seems to be missing in India. So, will India ever catch up to this tech boom? I wish um, we catch up. Uh, I want India to catch up. That's one of the, the dream that I've had in last 25 years that uh, one great product uh, will come out of India. Sure. Uh, you know, we have made huge progress in providing uh, services to the global world. Uh, we have excelled at operationalizing or deploying the technologies that get developed, uh, mostly in US, uh, but increasingly in China as well. But we ourselves haven't uh, graduated to a point where we develop these fundamental technologies. But if you look at history and look at you know how US has progressed, how, how China has progressed, you'll see that uh, US wasn't the innovation hub in the early 1900s or late 1800s. Uh, it was Europe. But US was doing a very good job of deploying that technology. Same thing happened with China. You know, from 1980s till probably 2010, China did a wonderful job of manufacturing um, and deploying technology around manufacturing into their uh, manufacturing industry. And now in last five, 10 years, they have moved towards innovation and creating uh, products and technologies. And in some cases, they are probably ahead of anywhere, any other country in the world. Absolutely. I would want and I wish and I think this is likely if we play our cards right, is that once India moves beyond the deployment phase, 
uh, where we help for deployed technologies, we will actually get to a point where we can uh, develop some of these fundamental technologies. And, um, you know, I am also involved with the startup uh, uh, ecosystem. And I see the quality of companies that are coming in. You know, 20 years back or 15 years back, they were mostly, uh, you know, just deploying a successful model in US or anywhere else in the world into India. Now you see a lot of companies that are uh, coming up with innovative solution, uh, still deployment of technology, but the problems that are very specific to India. And also we are starting to see companies that are developing fundamental technology, brand new technology uh, for India and then for the world. No, absolutely. I think we are definitely moving uh, in the right direction and quite rapidly. Uh, which sort of brings me to my next question. When do you think India will stop being called an emerging market? Uh, I think the day we will start to believe ourselves to be a developed country. Okay. Uh, you know, emerging market is a state of mind. Sure. Mean, as long as we think like uh, a poor country, country which doesn't have resources, we will be. You know, others will always see us as we see ourselves. Uh, the day the country starts to self-believe and show characteristic of a developed market, we will be a developed market. Got it. Got it. Uh, the next is probably the most interesting question on everybody's mind. Uh, the market seemed to be going upwards, seemingly sort of ignoring uh, the unknown state on the ground. Is this some sort of a buying panic or is it just liquidity or something completely uh, we can't understand right now? You know, trying to analyze market is in our view a mugs game. Uh, okay. You know, we are a participant in the market and usually you believe that uh, collectively so many people will be right most of the time. Uh, there are many, many reasons or many, many answers you can give to justify and explain what's happening in the market uh, includes what you said, you know, there is buying panic, there is a uh, uh, lot of liquidity. Uh, but in my mind, the primary reason is uh, that probably market overreacted uh, between 15th of March and uh, 23rd of uh, March. Uh, sure. You know, if you look at uh, on 22nd of uh, uh, February, I think the Sensex closed at 44,000 something. Um, and then by, or if you look, if you were to look at Nifty, it was 12,400. And in like some 15, 16 days or 22 trading days, I think, we went from that 12,400 to 7,500 on 23rd of March. Right? And this was all based on the, what was happening in New York and Milan and, uh, um, and parts of UK. Done. And the fear factor was so high that uh, people thought maybe we'll all kind of uh, drop dead on the street or if this is what is happening in New York, then just think what will happen in India. And, uh, you know, some of my friends who run uh, hospitals tell me that uh, they were being told that by 15th or 30th of April, they'll have like 8, eight lakh, expect that they'll be 8 lakh people in the hospital in a fairly serious condition across India. Sure. Now, in that scenario, I think market overreacted. Um, now, after that, you know, as the as panic subsided or the extreme panic subsided, people realized that, yes, it's bad, but not as bad. And so slowly we have recovered uh, and uh, trying to find the right value of the market. I have no idea if we are at the right value or not. Uh, okay. But, uh, but uh, you know, you look from the... From that peak, we are still down probably 10 odd percent. So, right. um, so you, if you are looking only from 23rd March, it looks like it has gone up a lot. Sure. If you look at long term, you kind of say Indian market over last 10 years has, uh, or six years has given like CAGR of maybe four five percent. That's not a lot of return. No, fair, fair, and uh, I think that's something that a lot of people are grappling with. That when are we over a three, four, five year period, if a lot of the strategies are giving, you know, two to five percent returns, uh, then what are we trying to do? Uh, obviously, there are strategies like yourself who've done significantly 
uh, better than the markets. Uh, and then sort of, you know, uh, moving on to understand more uh, about you as a person. Uh, you know, what is that one aspect uh, that no one knows about you? It's, it's hard to kind of come up with one thing that nobody knows, knows about. Or most people don't know about you. Don't know. I mean, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know. okay, let, let, me, uh, let me rephrase it. Uh, what, is, what is one thing that is the most uh, interesting thing about you? I love to read. Okay. And I love to, I mean, I, I just love to know a lot of stuff. So I love, I read like about history, about archaeology, about science, about physics, chemistry, history, history of finance, world history. You know, I just love to read. I, 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 and that's one thing that uh, uh, I really love. Okay, super. And sort of, you know, to round up the machine gun 15, uh, are you an optimist, pessimist or realist? I'm somewhere between realist and optimist. Um, I'm very optimist over the long periods of history. Sure. Uh, I'm more realist when looking at uh, the short periods. Okay. Great. Uh, we're Naresh, we've come to the end of Machine Gun 15. Sure. Uh, I'm happy to say that, you know, you come up with flying colors. Uh, I'm not sure whether you're a Bollywood fan or not. But your coffee with current hamper should reach you sometime during Unlock 8.0, I think. Uh, at least the way we are going. Uh, but you know, uh, you know, and sort of the question on the locking and unlocking. You know, the lockdown was quite synchronous, right? Uh, where there was a sort of a diktat given, saying that look, this is the date we are closing down. Business is shut down, and unlock seems to be a lot more asynchronous uh, in that manner. Where do you think we are headed with uh, this unlock and locking down? Well, I think this is just a period of uh, um, getting back to normal. And doing a asynchronous model makes imminent sense. I mean, you look at Noida or uh, Delhi, we have recovered quite a bit. So if you go to the market, it's almost looking like all the shops are open, people are there, and the, no and the traffic is not as high as um, it used to be, but it's probably uh, primarily because the schools and colleges are not open and they do create a lot of traffic. Uh, otherwise, uh, it may, you know, life in uh, Delhi and NCR is uh, pretty much uh, back to normal if there is anything called normal in this time. Right. And if you go to the areas which are uh, badly impacted or where the caseload is still increasing, uh, they probably should be in lockdown and they are in lockdown. So, uh, so as things improve, uh, what we'll see is more and more cities and areas will uh, go through the experience that uh, Delhi and NCR have gone through, and we get back to normal. See, remember, humans have a, a incredible capability of adjusting to whatever situations they are put in. Right. So after the initial shock, people kind of start to adjust to the fact that we are living with a virus. A virus which uh, probably is uh, worse than what uh, flu virus is. Um, you know, it has fatality rate of some kind, but you know, you don't shut life because of that. Um, you know, uh, people die because of 50 different reasons. Uh, here is another one. Uh, is it, if it was like very fatal, which is like, you know, fatality rate of 20, 30%, that's a very different thing compared to something which has a fatality rate anywhere between 0.1% depending on who you ask. Right. People will adjust to it. Um, and uh, that's actually what you see around the world. Like, you know, if you uh, are tracking stories, you know, China, in Wuhan, which is the center of uh, this epidemic, sure. they had a huge water party where, uh, you know, there are probably thousands of people in a water park without any mask. And uh, I think that's what is going to happen to Every other place. Fair. Uh, I think I, you know, I, I, I would, I, I would agree to that. And saying that there's, there's going to be a new normal which is going to be established at some point, 
and it's not going to be a point in time date a point in time data but more uh, spread out over thing where someone two years later you might not be even talking about uh, the virus obviously i agree and also i think you know everybody talks about uh, this that oh the life will change uh, and change for good so the, what the change that will happen is just acceleration of some of the trends that we were already in Can but it. otherwise humans have always lived with um, viruses and bacteria and pathogen forever and yeah. you know our lifestyle that has evolved is despite all these and after a little shock to whatever has happened you look at china you look at you know parts of europe where the virus uh, is mostly kind of uh, moderated the yeah. life is mostly back to normal people will like to have coffee with and sit with each other people like to go to movies people like to fly people like to go on vacation Absolutely. that's what life is uh, yes uh, one significant change that i think is more permanent is increasing use of technology uh, okay. what this virus has done is it's it's a forcing function that's got people to adapt to this technology faster than they would have done on their own absolutely absolutely uh, sort of naresh uh, moving on to uh, your past right uh, you come from a very interesting ba- background uh, at adobe right uh, and then to see someone to shift from uh, someone who's been the managing director at adobe to someone uh now at acura cap what was your first interaction uh with the stock market and what was your driver at that point in time well you know i've been a uh, stock market investor for a long long time when i was in us in 1990s i bought uh, you know i actually invested in one of the first india fund that oppenheimer launched uh in 91 i also bought things like intel and microsoft and cisco and some of the stocks i bought there i actually still hold okay. uh, wow. so so i i have been in market for a long time um, you know after i moved to india in 90s and actually few years before that also i stopped uh, looking at market because of uh, the deep commitment or time commitment that you have towards research and uh, the adobe job but after like 2005 or 6 again started to look um, at stock market and that's where we kind of again got interested and uh, this is what happened okay super super when clearly it's 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 paid out for you guys uh, i think you guys are managing a significant amount of money at acura cap uh, you know and uh, in the past 3 to 5 years you guys have also delivered a significant alpha if i could get an answer what has been that edge and that usp that you guys have been able to apply year on year uh, to afford such a performance so you know I, I, before we get into it i mean we are a technologist uh, you know yeah. i have i have been uh, doing rocket science some part of my life and really rocket science you know some of the work i did is probably sitting is is was work was for nasa for dod in us and uh, for us uh you know technology is the first thing that you use if you have to solve a problem and yeah. uh and when we kind of started to look at stock market for us it was let's build a system that will help us uh, or that will do stock selection and this is again we are talking about now 2007 before all the robo advisors were being talked about so we we have a algorithm that we have developed over a uh, over a 10 year period uh, which looks at all the financial um, and uh, technical data which is you know the stock price and the volume over a la- long periods of every stock that is traded on the stock market uh, okay. does a deep analysis and in the end the goal is to find uh, good quality companies uh, reasonably good quality companies means you are not we are not like about find the absolutely uh, spick and span uh, clean companies but very decently good quality companies at a reasonable price and hold it for a reasonable period of time we are neither uh, and because it's all driven by machines uh, you know we have no emotions and because the machine can analyze large amount of data it can look at every stock so we are not wedded to any particular sector any company um, okay. as the algorithm suggests 
uh, we do that and that's what our edge is we are using technology and not falling prey to the human which in my mind is the worst enemy of a equity investor sure the investor's worst enemy is himself for sure yeah. uh, so it, it, if i understand it correctly the strategies that you run are completely sort of quant and algo driven they are algo driven they you know quant people have used in different context sure. uh, there is one quant where people look at data to come up with a microsecond millisecond or a day trading strategy sure. we are not a day trader you know we are when we buy a stock we generally are buying it with a view to hold for at least a year unless things change substantially and right. for some stocks we hold it for like 10 year period uh, but the the idea is that keep asking you, uh, ourselves all the time if we have the best portfolio uh, for our investors and uh, whenever we uh, the algorithm suggests that there is actually a better set of stocks to buy we will make that switch got it uh, you know and uh, in this narration i have done quant for uh, close to 10 years myself and uh, or algo based trading and one of the things that i have always fought with is when things go bad uh, it's very difficult to uh, to keep your hand uh, from pulling the plug of sorts you know how do you control that uh, emotional quotient when things are uh, probably falling apart or what seems to be falling apart uh, you have you have asked a wonderful question actually it's the hardest thing uh, to do when running a algorithm based strategy right and for first many many years uh, we always looked at the portfolio and, and said no this stock is not good this is uh, i know this company is not good let's not buy this uh, we'll buy something else and we kept interfering quarter after quarter after quarter and yeah. every time you interfere and you look at the result and say shit <laughs> if i had just followed the machine i i would have done better right and so and we'll slap ourselves and say no, no i'm not going to do it next time and next time again i'll do so actually you know in my house in my bedroom i have uh, multiple posters which um, i've put and i've put that you know probably 5 6 7 years back which is trust the model follow the model don't fall in love with the stock or don't hate stocks right, right. <laughs> so, and it's it's so hard to to tell yourself that the model knows more than what you know fair fair uh, it hurts the ego so then the obvious question narish is that how do you determine your model is actually failing well uh, you know i think it's a article of faith okay I mean, we have done enough of testing uh, the model we have built is not like some data fitting or curve fitting it's uh -huh. it's embedding the business knowledge that we have had i mean I, when i when i was at adobe i i was also uh, significantly involved in uh, acquisition and actually one of the big acquisition adobe did uh, uh, which was macromedia 3.2 billion dollar you know i was the lead for that so when we were buying companies we always followed certain principle which is buy companies that are that have good growth prospect companies that can um, that have moat and so on so those are the basic principle of good companies that we have embedded along with the uh, uh, buy it when the valuations are reasonable and uh, that market also likes that company it's not a hated company in the market so when you buy a portfolio of such companies uh, you are you tell yourself you know what can go wrong uh, you know from time to time such portfolios will underperform and they do but uh, if you do follow this basic principle over a long period of time uh, i i don't know how it uh, underperforms the market substantially because in a way you know if you if you don't do anything just have a monkey throw a dart and pick stocks randomly and follow this strategy i would think that that will also perform the market and there are actually experiments that have been done in in literature and in universities around the world um, which actually demonstrate that a monkey hitting the dart and buying that portfolio and churning every year doesn't do any worse than the market absolutely absolutely 
and sort of you know talking of uh, the roller coaster ride of drawdowns trials and tribulations uh, you know when i started off i lost uh, uh, when i started off my career i lost a significant amount of money on some uh, what now in hindsight seemed uh, stupid bets uh what is that one instance where you've probably given uh, a significant amount of tuition fee uh, as i would call it uh, to uh, mr market well uh, you know uh, when i uh, before get myself getting into the the direct equity I, between 2003 to 2007 i mostly invested my own money uh, through mutual fund sure and um, you know and initially i was buying all the good quality hdfc uh, funds hdfc equity reliance vision and so on um, and then i got into uh, a whole bunch of uh, or put a lot, lot of money in uh, and um, you know initially those funds did very well and i didn't understand what exactly the fund manager was so i met the fund manager uh, a couple of times uh, but i didn't understand you know all the nuances of investing in small cap stocks and uh, especially leverage small cap stocks sure. and and came 2008 and that portfolio uh, you know was down like anywhere from uh, 50% to 75% or more <laughs> sure. and and that's when i realized the difference between a large cap and a small cap and uh, the what you should not do uh, in stock market and also that was the the, the key incident that motivated me to actually look at uh, investing uh, directly in the stock market. I said, well, I can't do that. losing that whole 60% of the portfolio. Let me do it myself. Fantastic. And you also take the other side as well. Uh, you know, what is throughout your career, maybe any instance, what is that one event or one stock or one uh, instance that you saw uh, very clearly uh, but probably the market uh, ignored completely. Well, you know, market is a is a, we do, I don't see any market. My the algorithms that we have that they see the market, so I can't comment about the market or about the stock. Okay. Um, but you know, if I go back to let's say 1991, 92, sure. Um, it was very clear to us that uh, the world is moving digital. And actually, you know, there, there's some... Oh, at that point in time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, see, we were deep into technology. I mean, we were, uh, I was like, you know, at the bleeding edge of technology. Sure. Um, and uh, so it was very clear that, uh, you know, we will, uh, most of the, and this is 91, 92, the first internet had hit. And the first time I kind of clicked on that link, as what a, what a, what a technology, right? Mm -hmm. And... Um, uh, so, and that point itself, I was clear that word is now different. And keep in mind, you know, I was using email, I was using um, IRCTC. This is basically the internet relay chats uh, that were there before the 1991, 92 period. But internet was such a transformative uh, experience. I said, oh, this is, this is uh, a step function. Same thing, you know, first time I used a digital camera and it was an expensive digital camera, probably 93, 94. It was the first instant I clicked a photo. I said, wow, the <laughs> silver halide business is gone. It's sure. a, I, I didn't, I was not an invest, big investor at that time. Otherwise I would, I would have shorted Kodak at that point of time. But so there's so many actually such things that one could see. Uh, I was managing the print business for Adobe and uh, um, also you could see the transition happening from print to digital. Though lately, like, you know, you see uh, people still uh, continue to buy books and love books and actually book selling hasn't gone down beyond that point. Sure. sure. I still buy books. Exactly. So. There is something very inherent about human nature of buying books. Uh, you know, when I come to stocks, uh, you know, one stock that we bought uh, in 2010 was Bajaj Finance. Sure. And except for a brief six month period, or maybe three month period, we have held on to Bajaj Finance uh, since then. Wow. wow. And uh, so in a way that that has been a good buy. No, super. 
Uh, you know, Nanesh, we are almost coming to the end of this. Uh, you clearly have uh, done well, have a significant amount of experience across different industries. Uh, but what would you tell uh, investors right now uh, who are sort of just beginning to participate, maybe participated uh, only in Jan of this year and are seeing a good amount of lead? Uh, what would you tell them to do uh, as of now? So, you know, and this is something I'll tell all investors. Sure. Losing money is not fun. So anything you do in a stock market or in investing, make, try to minimize your risk. If you keep making money, uh, even in a small amount, quarter after quarter, uh, over a long period of time, the effect of compounding will make you a lot of money. If you lose 50% at any point, you'll have to get, you know, double your, or you'll have to get 100% returns to get back to where you started. Sure. So, the, the the in my mind you know the two things warren buffett said and i'm a big uh, fan and follower of uh, his uh, philosophy the two things he said don't lose money and uh, number two don't forget the rule number one Absolutely. i think that still stays as good as that yes uh, as an investor you take risk but at all times uh, when you are investing make sure you are taking as little risk as possible for the return that you seek. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Uh, superb, Nanesh. Uh, you know, thank you so much for your time. Uh, it's been a very interesting conversation. You're definitely one of those fund managers who fit into the non-fund manager role, but are, are, are currently doing well uh, for the reasons, you know, we've talked about. Uh, you know, just thanking you for your time. Just wishing uh, you know, uh, Acura Cap, uh, a very good 2020 for the time remaining, and hope all you guys are safe. Again, Manoj. thank you. Jay. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure talking to you. It's uh, real fun. Thank you so much, Naresh.